Welcome to Frankert Auto. Uh, today let's look at how the clutch itself works. So let's first of all look at the parts of the clutch. We have a release bearing, we have the clutch plate, we have the pressure plate. Okay. On the other side we have diaphragm springs and then we have the flywheel. So flywheel is what gets uh, attached to the um, the crankshaft. The flywheel spins at the same speed as the crankshaft. Okay. So we can compare these parts to the brake parts. It pretty well works opposite to the brake parts. So in this, in, in case of brakes, so if we look at the brakes, we have a brake rotor and then we have two pads. Each pad goes on either side of the rotor. Okay, so you go one on this side, one goes on the bottom. When you apply the brakes, these both pads, they squeeze the rotor and uh, the wheel comes to a stop. So in the case of flywheel, it's opposite. You have two rotors. So here you have one rotor, here you have two rotors. So flywheel acts as one rotor, your pressure plates acts as a second rotor. And the clutch plate acts as your, I painted it, so please don't leave any nasty comments. Uh, the clutch plate itself acts as your pad. So you got one pad, two rotors. Here you have one rotor and two pads. When you step on the clutch, this release bearing, it pushes on these diaphragm springs. So these diaphragm springs, they go down. As the diaphragm springs go down, these orange painted, the relief springs, they lift the pressure plate up. So this part goes up as these diaphragm springs go down. So we're gonna go to the press, we're gonna put everything together, we're gonna go to the press, and we're gonna try to replicate it, see if it works. So right now we have everything assembled. We have the, the pressure plate bolted onto the flywheel. So the yellow is flywheel. This is bolted onto the flywheel. And we have our clutch plate, which is inside here. Let's see if we can see it through here. So yes, I did paint it different colors. So the clutch plate is right here. So because of the pressure from these diaphragm springs, the pressure plate is squeezing the clutch plate between the, well, basically the clutch plate is being squeezed between the pressure plate and uh, our flywheel until we press these fingers, the diaphragm springs down. So we have the whole assembly uh, on our uh, hydraulic press. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press it down. We're gonna press down on the, the release bearing. You will see these fingers, the, the diaphragm fingers go down. As these fingers go down, these orange, the ones that are painted, these orange springs, there are three of them on this assembly they will start lifting the pressure plate, which is red. The pressure plate is gonna release, it's gonna go up and it's gonna release our clutch, which is, I painted it in silver color. So you will see, let me just grab a screwdriver. So just in case you didn't see that. So this is our clutch plate. You can see there is absolutely no gap between the, the pressure plate and our clutch plate. But as the springs push down, you will see a gap and we'll be able to move the clutch plate up and down. Okay, let's try this. So you see these fingers going down. As they go down, this orange, the bottom springs, they make the pressure plate move up. Now you can see the gap. So here is our gap. Okay, and now I can move the clutch plate. So that's how when you press on the clutch, the cl clutch gets disengaged and it's not spinning the pressure plate uh, or the clutch plate, sorry, not the pressure plate. The clutch plate doesn't spin at the same speed as your flywheel because it's just floating there. It doesn't do anything. So let's release it because I want to make the video of this once more. So there you go. That's closing. That's clutch is engaged and you'll see the clutch disengaging. There you go, you can see the gap happening there. So that is the clutch disengaged. Hopefully this made sense. Thank you very much for watching.